I didn't really think that I was gonna live to be very old. I didn't even think I was gonna live to be 21 because I grew up in LA. There were tons of gangs. You see a guy wearing a certain color shirt, man, you might have to run and it'll save your life because you, you got the wrong shirt on, they're gonna kill you. I love baseball, it was my passion. I didn't know anything about football. 10th grade, played wide receiver. 11th grade, I played tight end. And then the 12th grade, coaches are like, we're moving you to quarterback. So I ended up sitting out an entire year before I started college. And when I was in college, I'm thinking, hey, I can be a wide receiver, I could be a quarterback, so I could be any of these positions. When they moved me to defense, I really kind of got mad, but I wanted to play. It kicked in after that season. I led the nation in interceptions. Like overnight, everything changed. I was uh, in bed when the phone rang. Today, they take the guys to New York. They didn't do that back then. Hello, Mike, the New England Patriots. You've just been drafted in the first round. You were the fifth pick. My mom didn't know what that meant. And she goes, oh, do you have to take a boat over there? <laughs> I played seven years in New England. He was the piece de la resistance when he joined the Raiders in 1983. The term shut down corner was first used in the NFL to refer to Mike's dominance in the Super Bowl of 1983. When did you all meet? Through a neighbor when he was playing with the Raiders. I enjoyed the last couple years of his playing days. Didn't know a lot about football. I actually took a class. Mike Haynes, Hall of Famer, 14-year NFL career, nine-time All-Pro, NFL a Defensive Rookie of the Year. It's not an exaggeration to say that Mike is one of the great quarterbacks of the NFL. He was effortless. He was graceful. He was deceptively strong. He is not for now. He is forever. I present for enshrinement the man, Mr. Michael James Heflin Haynes. This is probably the one of the most emotional experiences that an athlete can ever have. My sweetheart, Gigi Madonna, thank you for making this the greatest day of my life and sharing this day with me. Thank you all. It was a really, really special time. We've built a long life together. Mike had three kids from his first marriage. We have four grandkids. We went on to have three kids of our own. He's such a big mentor. He's really involved in my life. I'm living in Arizona for school, but I call him probably every day. Now being a little bit older and knowing what my dad went through, what my mom went through with him, it's probably brought my family closer. Just knowing that, you know, if he didn't have that screening, he wouldn't be here with us today. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was 55 years old. So that year, he was still working at the NFL in, in New York. The only reason I went and got screened, really, was to encourage them to get screened. They noticed in that screening that his PSA level had spiked. They encouraged him to get a biopsy. I was really, really scared. Um, because I didn't know a lot about prostate cancer. My mom just, you know, told me to basically pray about it. Of the 12 samples that they took from the biopsy, he had cancer in nine of them. So it was high volume. Then came the, the daunting task of figuring out what to do. I had a lot of questions. I asked a lot of questions. The doctors told me a lot African-Americans were more likely to have prostate cancer, more likely to have higher surgeries and stuff like that. When it really started me thinking about how long I was gonna live, I told my wife not to tell anybody. I connected with Dr. Kane. He had done hundreds of da Vinci robotic system prostatectomies, and he really seemed like he knew what he was doing. And it just, I think it's a personal choice, definitely the right choice for Mike. It was kind of fun to get a chance to meet uh, meet a real hero of mine. We've you know, had a relationship as physician and patient, but we've also developed a friendship over the years. 
Once a Raiders fan, always a Raiders fan. Mike, like many men, had many options. So we'd sent him to speak to a radiation oncologist. We thought about focal therapy. We thought about brachytherapy, a form of radiation, and ultimately decided to have a radical prostatectomy, which is a surgical treatment for prostate cancer. So without further ado, prostate cancer advocate, NFL Hall of Famer, Breakfast with Champions, Mike Haynes. I learned a lot about prostate cancer from Chris because I think he felt like it was important that I feel comfortable. We all share humanity. Health is something that doesn't matter whether you're an NFL Hall of Famer or anybody in the community. We all are at risk for health difficulties. About a 1.7 times risk of death from prostate cancer, black men versus uh, white men in America. And we've seen that outcome disparity since the 1970s. And we've not been able to close that gap. And there's a number of studies, recent uh, literature that I've participated in that suggests it really appears to be less effective screening, detection, and treatment for black men in America. We think that if men are screened and treated similarly, they would have similar outcomes. Let's make sure that black men are getting screened, effectively treated at the same rates of white and Latino men. And I think that will close that mortality gap. I'm older than any man that in, in my mom's family and in my dad's family. I've exceeded all of them by a gazillion years. Found out so many of my friends had had prostate cancer. I'd go into a room, i say, how many men in this room have had prostate cancer? Four hands would go up, five hands would go up. I became the spokesperson for it because I wanted to make sure that they need to know if it was in their family. They need to know that they're dealing with it in the early stages. I played 10 years with the Chargers as their place kicker. We were given a unique privilege to be an NFL player. And we owe Mike and guys like him a huge debt. We're both fans of Dr. Kane, who is really leading this whole prostate cancer issue. So to see the impact uh, Mike's having is extraordinary. I'll cheer for him all day long. It's uh, it's really extraordinary. For the most part, when most guys find out they have it, black men find out they have it, it's in the later stages. They, there's not too much they can do. You might lose your life. I was lucky to catch it in the early stages, but I don't want my friends to be lucky. I want them to say, I caught lucky because of Mike. You don't want to be alive by luck. To expose yourself and be vulnerable, and I think for the kids to see that, that that is okay, and really it's your duty in a lot of ways. Um, the NFL was very good to our family and still is. Anything that we can do to get back in a positive way to help people is something we definitely want, want to do and show our kids. I decided um, with, when I was diagnosed with the prostate cancer to set a goal about living long time. Before that, I just lived my life. And I realized, wait a minute, you mean there's something I can do? You need to be intentional. We started playing pickleball, which was kind of fun. Mike works out with the boys. He helps them run, teaches them different techniques. We like to go on morning walks over in the park near our house. I wanted the kids to be healthy, so I'm always cooking healthy meals. If you would have lost that battle when I was six, I don't know who I would be. Now being an adult, I'm, I'm super grateful that he um, was able to get treatment when he did and that he caught it early because yeah, having him in my life has been so amazing. I'm super, super grateful um, that he took the initiative and got that screening. Don't fear screening. You know, don't put your head in the sand and fear the screening event. Uh, it's the wrong time to be afraid. Let's gain knowledge. Let's understand what's happening with it, with ourselves and then make an informed decision. The reason I'm alive today is because I caught my cancer in the early stages, not the later stages. If I caught in the later stages, I was 55. I would not be alive today. I would not be here. <laughs>